All right, we're going to call our meeting to order for March 4th, 2020. Um, we are going to start with our consent agenda. We have minutes to approve from January 8th, 2020, uh, January 20th, 2020, February 5th of 2020, and February 19th of 2020. We have warrants to approve A2034S. AP 2034 and AP 2035. We have electronic pay stubs proposed by Human Resources on the content here, but we're going to mix that for now. Uh, Zatirka Park Maintenance. We have a receipt of vote of the Park and Recreation Commi Commission for the DPW to take over that maintenance. Uh, Shala Agricultural Preservation Restriction just a vote of the select board. We did vote on that at town meeting. Uh, PVTA COA van agreement. We've got a final vote and signature. And then we have a one day liquor license for the Pyramid Mall of Hadley. Margarita Madness, April 2nd, 2020. May I have a motion? So moved. All those in favor? Second. Oh, thank you for doing that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 When I went, went in to look for my, at my board docs yesterday, none of this materials was on there. I know. So it's kind of ready to get it. back at it and look at it since I work full time. So I just want to see if we can get it up on you know, post it. I, I would I, like the materials on there if that's possible, please. And I would really Thank like it on Friday afternoon because then we have all weekend to look at it. I know there's some emergencies that come up, but if it can't get on the agenda, then it waits till next week. I don't mind it on Monday. I just would like to see it before the meeting. Okay. Uh, is anyone here for public comment tonight from 630 to 645? Uh, have a three minute period to make a comment. I don't know if anybody's here for that. Is there a comment about the uh, warrant 7.7 7, is it about the comp parking on the common oh wait yeah. uh, on the agenda on the agenda yeah okay we'll get to that and then we oh, can just so I can touch base on it then yep yeah. yep yeah any anything else okay um, I guess the first thing we'll hit is the um, I'm just gonna skip down town of Hatfield 350th anniversary invitation Someone here from the town of Hatfield? Were they going to come? They're, they're, they're going to come. They're, they're going to come. Here. I thought I'd just get that get that on. I thought they might be here. Um, we have an appointment at 6:45, so that's 10 minutes away. Um, Conway letter of support is that one? Yeah, we could do the Conway letter of support. Basically, the town of Hadley is in receipt of a letter from the selectmen of the town of Conway who expressed their support of S205 and H364, an act relative to the Rural Policy Advisory Commission. David, do you have um, some insight into those two acts of legislation? Yes, yeah, so the uh, Rural Policy Advisory Commission is a spin-off of the Rural Policy Initiative that's been in front of the select board in Western Massachusetts in general for couple of years we had uh, PVTA, PVPC rather, work on it as well as the FERCOG um, and the idea is, is that uh, uh, that legislation passed in Boston very often is oriented towards urban, suburban uh, communities, larger communities and rural communities and maritime communities tend not to be considered in terms of the impacts of formula funding, density requirements, other kinds of uh, regulations, anything that might be passed by um, by the legislature. So this would establish a Rural Policy Advisory <coughs> Commission that would weigh in on any new act of legislation and talk about its effects, both beneficial as, as well as detrimental to rural communities communities of populations of 12,000 or fewer. 
So are they asking us to do also send a letter of support to um, the state house, or they don't actually ask that, but they did send it to us. So do we have the actual letter. It should be there. I'll, I'll make sure you have a copy. I don't see it on the yeah. <coughs> Is it a long letter? It's a one pager. Do you have so a letter? I don't have to have it right here. No, so. you don't have it. Okay. okay. I was just going to say, because it was something you could read and then we could. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was It's kind of hard to vote on something that's not perfect. Well, right now it's just an announcement that we're going to see the vote. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, if we could get that letter, then we can put it on a future agenda item and uh, look into that. Um, Plenty of seats down front, yeah. right in the front there. And then maybe we could just talk about the town uh, of Hadley website service interruption. Uh, just an explanation of that cancellation uh, or interruption, and then that caused the cancellation of several committee meetings due to posting problems. Um, David, do you have anything on that? Yeah, so earlier, earlier this uh, this week, um, we uh, or last week it was last week that this occurred. Um, the town's website uh, crashed and could not be restored. Uh, we discovered that early on Monday morning. Uh, we worked with our uh, IT people for uh, all day long. Uh, six hours after we discovered the, the failed website, we had not had seen the website restored, which under the regulations of the Commonwealth meant that all the meetings that were posted for that Monday night and for Tuesday no longer had valid postings. This is according to the Attorney General. Uh, and we did uh, restore the website the following day, but we had to cancel a number of meetings because of problems with posting. This turned out to be an outside server, um, and it created problems all over the Commonwealth. Many of the uh, municipalities were affected, from Orleans in the east all the way to the Berkshires. So uh, we restored it. We're back running. We're uh, properly posting meetings. Um, I'm exploring with the town clerk and the attorney general's office a, uh, a way to uh, develop an alternate posting system that would not be susceptible to network outages. Uh, right now, the attorney general is saying that there is no alternate way of doing this, but there has to be, so I'll continue working on that so we have some resiliency in our, uh, our town posting issues. And the vendor that was this town? Town online, town's online. Was it, was, it was Civics Plus. Civics Plus. It was actually their vendor called Contigix Data Centers, mm -hmm. and that's whose server failed. Okay. So, I mean, normally, I mean, if you're, especially if you're hosting, they should have a failover. So, could we press whoever we're contracted through to press whoever they're contracting with to get a good answer on why this won't happen again or what they'll do if this ever happens again? As I understand, they're going to be reaching out to us all very soon, offering um, solutions for future times. This is the first time it's happened in seven years that we've been posting yeah. through this system. Um, so it's not a very common occurrence, but they are, no, but they are definitely yeah. they're definitely working on it on their end. But I will, I will reach out to them and reiterate that the town of Hadley would really like them. Okay. Mr. Let's go from Okay. Break this one. Uh, is he out there in the hall? He's up in the hall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we just wanted to, you can st stand or sit, whatever you want to do, but just wanted to. Uh, <laughs> no, we're excited that Hatfield is celebrating its 350th uh, anniversary and, you know, just wanted to, I'm glad you're here to present to us and tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing and if we can help or participate or anything along those lines, so. Well, I'm Ed Lesko and I co-chair the uh, Field and uh, Sharon Nicholas, I'm a member of the steering committee and the 
historical representative for the 350th um, celebration. Yes. A um, little bit about what we're doing. Okay, we're excited also about the parade and uh, the first thing that's coming up is the um, incorporation day, which is going to be the 31st of May. Uh, that's in 1670, that's when we're incorporated. And uh, so what we do is a reenactment and um, we're excited about that. And that's why we're here tonight to go over it with you to see how you want to participate and uh, see how the two towns can work together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sure, I, want to sure, I can program. give you some details on the day if you would like that. Sure, yeah, that'd be great. great. Okay, so I think you have a packet of information that mm -hmm. uh, Ed left and maybe if I can just take you through some of those documents and explain some of them. So <clears throat> in your packet, do you have a packet? I think I have pictures. It's so scanned in, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, is it right there too? Okay. okay. So on the left-hand side, if you open your packet, it's basically information that we've been distributing for the past few months in terms of the overall uh, schedule. It is pretty firm right now. It does say preliminary, but uh, we're getting to the point where we know that these times are pretty accurate. Um, also, it gives you just some historical content about why we're celebrating the day. As Ed mentioned, the town of Hatfield was, uh, it was recorded to be a township of themselves on May 31st, 1670. So basically, it's our birthday and we're celebrating it with this Incorporation Day celebration. Uh, the second document in your left-hand side packet is the Save the Date letters that we sent out to state and federal elect officials in the state of Massachusetts. And also, and I hope you, and I hope you got your letter, we sent it to um, the uh, town select board and to the con uh, historical commission. And so, um, were you, did, you, did you receive that letter? Okay, great, thank you so much. Uh, we have had confirmation on um, State Rep. Uh, Lindsay Sabadosa will be attending and State Senator Joanne Cummings will be attending. And from Representative Jim McGovern's office, uh, he, uh, the office said that he does plan to attend unless he's pulled away for something. I'm still waiting um, on some responses from the other elected officials. Um, on the right-hand side of your uh, packet, it's just basically some information, some details as to what that day is going to consist of. Um, since um, the inhabitants on the west side of the river have crossed the river um, uh, quite a bit uh, for 10 years until they became a township, uh, we're kind of honoring that by building a boat and doing a river crossing in the morning. Uh, I've given you some details about the boat. Um, we do have a backup in case the river is too high. Uh, we're just going to bring the boat up to the town hall uh, for people to take a look at. The uh, congregational uh, church is going to have a service, and Reverend Randy did say he was reaching out to your um, church, and hopefully we can have a joint, you know, Reverend Randy wants to have a joint service. Then from 11.30 to 12.30, we have an hour where people can make some speeches and maybe talk. And then afterwards, we're going to have a meet and greet in the church parlor. And um, uh, during this meet and greet, which is going to go from 12.30 to 3, we're going to open the Hatfield 325th Time Capsule, um, in addition to having a presentation by Jonathan Martwell on the church, uh, Congregational Church Bill. So we will have refreshments. <coughs> and, um, and then the last document in your packet is just an overall schedule of events that we have had for some time and it just tells you what's coming up and some of the things um, um, in terms of the events later on this year. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to um, maybe go into any more detail on Corporation Day if you need it. I'd just like to add a little bit to that. Yeah. Um, we're planning to launch the boat over here on the Hadley side, um, over on uh, Huntington. Mm -hmm. Huntington Road, right. Okay. okay yeah. And down where the power lines are, because mm -hmm. that's directly across. From what we found, that was where they originally launched the boat originally back in 1960. <coughs> okay, so we want to try to get as close as we can to do with that. Um, what we do have to do is find out uh, there's a gate there. Just want to buy a time to take a look at it again. Um, so we have to find out the power company controls that. So um, I'll get in touch with Mike Spank, though. Uh, see if you can uh, help us out there and see what we can do there. Um, 
So as far as uh, getting involved with uh, you folks, um, you can do as much as you as you like. Uh, we hope you attend and uh, you know be part of. Uh, since Happy is our mother company. Uh, by the way, I'm originally from Happy. Lush Street, and middle, uh, middle Street, and North Happy. So. <laughs> Everybody crosses the river at some point. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. They either marry or they do something, right? <laughs> Mr. Woodwater just yes, a couple he, years ago. Yes, so. he did. Yes, but he married a Hatfield girl. Right. Yes. So, um, and then, uh, well, that's basically what's going to happen there. Uh, we'll, from there, we'll do go to the church, like Cher said, and then afterwards on the front lawn outside the church, we'll do the proclamation readings mm -hmm. and so on. Um, Cher did a lot of research down in Boston. Um, she went and got all the official documents that were originally right. processed back in the early days from 1667 to I'm, 1670. I'm sure you know about all the petitions that went back and forth uh, between the east side and the west side and happened for 10 years. So um, I've done a lot of research. A lot of these petitions and documents will be on display in the church parlor during the meeting greet just you know to talk about them um and of course this is the final proclamation and this like and mentioned will be read uh at the end of all the speeches we have it broken down at the women's church so uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she asked me to proofread it the other day and i'm looking at it and there's and you, word from saying wait a something just shared the truth and you, you remember that mary lou cutter she Mary Lou Cutter was a, under historical commission yeah, in Hadley, but she was also a teacher here in Hadley, mm -hmm. okay. and she wrote a history book um, yeah, she did. Yeah. for us, our children, to have over here. So I don't know if you have a copy. Oh of that yes, or we not. do. Oh yes, yeah. we do. So mm -hmm. we're very happy about that. that oh she yeah. Incorporated that also. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's definitely in our museum all the time. Mm -hmm. So someone had mentioned to me, of course, in my roundabout way, and of course I see the boys at Big Y. Uh, in the morning, they go for coffee from your Hatfield, your Hatfield boys, and uh, they were mentioning to me about um, putting um, a tree from Hadley, and I, I thought that was a really great idea of, of a tree traveling from Hadley to Hatfield uh, to commemorate also the 350th for you. So I'd like to, you know, endorse us in doing that and yeah. getting a tree and yeah, uh, participating in that uh, event yeah. also. Would that be good? Nice. That's excellent. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. In your package, you probably have a calendar. Yes. Okay. Um, I mentioned to David that uh, on the calendar is all our list of events for everything that's going on in Hatfield that uh, people reported uh, from the school committees. Uh, functions right up until <coughs> all our functions for the 350th. Um, we have a summer celebration coming up, I think, in August, and uh, it's on the calendar there, and mm -hmm. that's going to be a great day for the kids and um, adults alike, and uh, Ed Foreman's orchestra will be playing, I think, from 6 to 8, mm -hmm. and, um, so, and he'll also be in the parade on a float. I'm I found that out yesterday. <laughs> we have about uh, seven to eight uh, bands so far. I'm complimenting half the heavy for having Hopkins with them. Mm -hmm. okay, we just got notified the other day with that. Oh, great. So we greatly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, look forward to this whole event here. Mm -hmm. um, we have new folks in, uh, right behind us in, in the lineup. Okay, so you'll be in and out, okay, so, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're welcome to. Um, be part of the uh, viewing stand afterwards if you'd like to come back to it. Um, just let us know when we're in the break. That's what happened. You need someone to paddle the boat? Paddle the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with the boat. Back in 1670, the boat did You got your boat there. <laughs> <laughs> boat. Your boat you need there. a historical <laughs> outfit. I'm all in. Did you guys run away from the Hadley from the east side, or did we push you over? What? Did you run away from the east side or did we push you over to the west side? Well, you know, initially in 1660, 1661, you had some individual who start, who settled on the west side and I think they just evolved, to be honest with you, from everything that I've read. I did want to mention that once we get the final confirmation from the federal and state uh, elected officials, we will be sending out a formal invitation. So you'll get another invitation with all the final details. I do not think that any of the time um, schedules will change, but I'll just announce as to um, the final details is who's attending from um, 
state and federal level. <coughs> okay. If uh, maybe that schedule we can put on our TV5 or a little access uh, channel too. We would love to do that for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have great. any questions for us? No, no, it sounds exciting and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch with, you know, where we can, maybe we'll talk as a board and see what we mm -hmm. would want to do and uh, mm -hmm. see where we can participate. So okay, that great. sounds exciting. Um, yes, uh, we, yeah. we have uh, the parade committee. Um, I met with them last night. I had the night before last. I had two meetings that night, so I went back and forth. But mm -hmm. um, the parade is all set. It's all color-coded where the staging areas are. Um, so what you'll do is when you come into town, you'll have uh, like a... Uh, let's say, for instance, a red thing on your dash, mm -hmm. and you'll go in the staging area where it's red, red or whatever they assign you. Uh, make it easy for everybody so you know where to come. Great. Yeah. I have great. it all laid out. The parade could go anywhere from two to four hours, depending on the situation in the day. Well, we participated in Northampton and we're delighted, in Amherst, and we're delighted to participate in Hatfield. I can speak for myself, and yeah. I'm sure everybody It was else. a lot of work for ours when we did ours, too. Yeah. Do, so do we need to tell people if they want to do a float from Hadley? How do you want that to work? To, you mean to participate, you like the fire department and stuff like that? The fire department, if people want to put a float in your parade, or? Yes, we, we do. Um, just notify the parade committee. Okay. okay. Go online or you can call myself or the town hall and we'll get right back to you uh, for people that want to have a float. Um, and whatever else you want to have, um, and then fire trucks or um, whatever you want to bring, uh, whatever delegation you choose to do. Okay. Um, we'll welcome you and we'll put you in place here. And, and just, uh, I, I wasn't sure with what you're talking about, looking at the schedule and just for the viewers or whatever, it sounds like. The May 31st is the boat crossing, speeches, that yes, kind of thing, and then June 13th yes, is the parade, parade. day. Yes, okay, parade. yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I was like, are these all happening in one day no, or no, different no. things? So yeah, two different days. <laughs> That's what I'm okay. saying. The, the schedule of the events, if we could put it on yeah. Channel Five, then yeah, that could help. Yeah, and okay. refresh our mem memories of times and dates. Yeah, we we do have a, a big. Um, I think it's this that next month. Uh, people are sitting on, on the radio station and, and so on. Um, we had a very good gala. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of We had some, some handy folks there. there. Uh, that was an excellent turnout. We, we, sold, we sold out. There's 400 tickets at the lodge of it, and we're sold out. It was a great event. That was our kickoff. And the end of the event uh, is uh, our luminarium, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. the uh, Saturday before Christmas. And that will be where we have the lighting of the candles in town and we'll have a big fireworks display. And that'll be the end of the celebration. Uh, we do have a big birthday cake in the center of town for, for those of you that went through the town. Uh, we'll be putting a top on probably in a week or two. We have a we made a new top with Westfield. We got the cake from Westfield and uh, they kept their top for the one that for historical purposes. And we'll do the same. And then Whitley's looking to Buy it from us. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. All right. Well, great. Thank you very much for coming and presenting to us, and uh, congratulations, and look forward to it. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We had a adult use marijuana RFQ for 6:45 this evening. Uh, the town of Hadley has received two submittals in response to our, our RFQ for retail store dispensing adult use marijuana. Um, the board will evaluate each proposal and determine eligibility to obtain the last remaining adult use marijuana retail establishment. So we basically have one license out there already for retail marijuana um, and a host community agreement with uh, the Heirloom Collective. They are on Route 9 near the Amherst line. And we have one more um, retail license available in Hadley. So we have two proposals to review that, um, that license. And we invited folks here tonight uh, to speak to us about their, their operations. And then we would potentially be voting to um, engage one of the operations in a host community agreement negotiation. Um, we could vote to 
put this on hold and revisit it at a later time. Um, but we wanted to bring everyone in, kind of see what they had to say after reviewing their proposals and make a decision based on uh, what's happening from there. So I don't know if the board has any questions before we invite people to speak, but my thoughts? Nope, okay. Um, so first one, I'll just go in alphabetical order, is Hadleaf Holistics. Uh, they were looking at um, putting an operation in the Hampshire Mall, and I don't know if somebody's here from Hadleaf that would like yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah would you guys want to come up and, and introduce yourselves, or stand? I maybe stand up and introduce yourselves yeah. so we could see you. Uh, but yeah. go ahead. Yeah. I'm uh, Matthew McTeague, I'm the, uh, working at the facility, assistant manager. I'm Andy Weoblad, I'll be the owner. And um, this is Lynn, she's from the mall. Oh, here I'm in, the yeah. landlord. Nice. Thanks, yep, yeah, yeah. What? what? Well, we brought a couple Thanks. larger imprints for you guys. We'll sure. hand it out along with a couple of uh, bullet points on why we feel that, you know, the mall location is a lot more secure than, you know, as opposed to another standalone feature location. So I know the original one we gave you is kind of small, so I just wanted you guys to be able to read this clearly as far as the layout. Thank you. The internal in line. Thank you. Thank you. So there are two floors in this location. You see the larger sections between the retail entrance and the, the, uh, the storage of product and back with the back door for delivery. <coughs> And this would be in what section of the mall? Uh, down near J JC. I believe Lynn has a layout of it. So this is a kind of a beautiful one. So this is the, this is the purchasing process because I know there's some concerns of you know, people being able to get in there. Um, so we kind of did a step by step. Of what building? What part of the? How the purchasing What's goes. The, what how was people it? Enter the building. <laughs> What was, what's the, um, so what proposed location um, they're looking at opening in is down here in the J.C. Penny Wing. It's actually a former GNC spa. So it's, it's off the main part of the mall. It's down the wing where Planet Fitness is. So it's not, I know that there was some confusion about the placement within the center. Um, it's not center court. It's not on the food court. It is down this end of the wing where there is a nail salon, JC Penny, and Planet Fitness where you have to be 18 or older to attend. Okay, <laughs> Not anymore, the nail salon is there now. Does anybody need a closer peek at the... I oh, know, that's good. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for me as the landlord? We were very, just, I wanted to add to um, Matt and Andy, we were very strategic in the placement of, of where we thought it would be appropriate in the mall. So I just wanted to point that out. We gave it a lot of thought. Lynn, you um, banned, this is a tobacco-free mall, right? Mm -hmm. So, and somebody was just asking me, like, well, if there's no tobacco with this, but I'm assuming it's because it's not. We have very strict um, behavior code. It's posted at all of our entrances. Just because you can purchase certain items in the mall doesn't mean that we condone. As a matter of fact, we prohibit the use of tobacco on property. Um, we prohibit vape pens. We prohibit the use of those things in the common area and in the parking lots. Same thing with open containers. Same thing with you know weapons of any kind. Just because you can purchase you know certain items at the center doesn't mean that we want you to be using them at the center, if you will. So we will continue to enforce, as we always do, our behavior code through 24-hour security um, and just monitoring monitoring customers and, and retailers. And where would the most logical entrance be to get to this location? Down this wing, um, right over here. So mm -hmm. on the JC Penny side, former ground round, for those of us that have been around a long time, that ground round entrance would be the best one. Really bring that back. I'm trying. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. So does the mall allow, have any prohibitions against yeah. tobacco retailers or alcohol retailers? You can purchase a beer at Arizona Pizza. You can purchase a beer at Penn's. Both are 
you know, would be considered family friendly establishments. But you um, can't purchase tobacco. But you can't, not currently, no. We're working on that also, concurrently. Oh, so you, there, there could theoretically be an establishment that sells Within tobacco Within the center of that some does. Yeah. Theoretically, that yeah. is something that we work with our tenants individually on. Mm -hmm. they, used, they used to sell yes. there, and then mm -hmm. they closed the ability mm -hmm. to do that. I was not here for that, and yeah. I'm working to correct that problem. Because, again, just because you can purchase it at the center doesn't mean that we would allow you to smoke in the center or do any of those things. Mm -hmm. We try to be all things for all people. We try to establish, you know, what the consumer and what shoppers are looking for. And this is obviously a use that is creating demand. Um, you know, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have seen trampolines or go-karts or, you know, different uh -huh. uses under one roof, yeah. and now they are. So we're trying to be, you know, trying to, to maintain our relevance within the market. Mm -hmm. what we want to stress is going to be very discreet. It's, there isn't going to be a big uh, sign in the window, or it's going to, the sign itself is going to be very discreet. The windows might be frosted, and you won't be able to see inside the place. There'll be one door for an exit, one door for, for entry. When you walk in, there'll be a security guard checking your IDs. You'll need to be buzzed in. Um, and then there'll be all sorts of educational material. That, that we'll introduce you to. There will, then, then another security guard will uh, take you to the cashier. The cashier will take your ID again. There'll be a seed to sale uh, uh, POS type system that's going to more or less uh, be able to track the amount of uh, product that people buy. So we'll be able to uh, basically limit, limit, limit the amount that they purchase or not sell too, too much. Then once they're done, there's going to be another exit door. They'll need to be buzzed out, and then they exit. But it's going to be very discreet. Um, uh, I think one of the concerns might have been that uh, there's a lot of like kids in the mall, but they won't. But it'll be at the end of the mall where. Uh, <coughs> I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> 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 it'll be at the end of the mall where. The kids really, really aren't there. It'll be discreet. There, are, there won't be all sorts of signs, like we're selling bud or pot. So, it's not, it's not going to be anything visible. Even when you walk into the place, uh, basically, all the product's going to be underneath the counter. There's going to be nothing visible at all. Um, we feel that the mall would be a pretty good location because uh, lots of ample parking, separate entrances. You know, some of the facilities that I visited. There's lots of uh, uh, traffic, and a lot of authorities need to get need to like start. Uh, uh, sorry, the police officers need to like start monitoring the traffic and in and out, and it creates all sorts of congestion. So I really think that the mall is a perfect location because there's lots of parking, there's lots of security. You got the mall security, but our, our security, um, and as far as uh, you know, kids. Um, I, wa I want to make the comparison to like alcohol and uh, like marijuana. Like when people walk when, when people walk in <coughs> when people walk into a package store and buy alcohol, a lot of times a lot of times somebody like myself might not even be carded. So a lot of people you can walk in not be carded, but this is going to be like very very strict. The guidelines. Uh, for us, they're going to be very tough because every single person is going to need to be carded. Their ID is going to need to be tracked. Um, their information is going to go to a database. Um, even the state will be able to monitor us if there's if product is disappearing, which won't be disappearing because, uh, like I said, they have a seed to sale POS type system, and they could easily come and audit us and say, "Hey, we sold you this much product. Where is it?" Uh, it's kind of like the alcohol industry, where you have to buy from specific vendors. You can't just buy from wherever. And uh, the state can easily audit you on that as well. So it'll, it'll, be, it'll be tracked, heavy, heavily regulated. Um, it's actually a lot easier for somebody to walk into a package store for a minor 
and purchase alcohol versus like a facility like this. It'll be virtually impossible for a minor or somebody to walk in and buy marijuana type products. But I just want to stress that even though we might be kind of pioneers in the fact that we're trying to do it in a mall, I think it's a really discreet location because it's not wide and open, it's not on the main road, it's not a freestanding building, we're not putting signage all over the building that says we're selling marijuana. Like I said, it'll be very, very discreet. Um, we, yeah, we are just a couple on what Andy is saying. We considered the infrastructure as part of our negotiations, that that was something that we felt we could accommodate. Um, like he said, ample parking, ease and access in and out of the property, um, you know, from a traffic standpoint. Um, and 24-hour security and, and well-lit, all of those things, we felt like it was appropriate. Has the, um, have the police department been consulted at all just about your security plan? Not at this point. Once we get what uh, our security plan before we design it, we definitely would have to meet with the police and see what works for them and what kind of custom tailor it to them. Mm -hmm. And, and I just had a question kind of on your business, just because it was different than the other operations I've seen, it seems like you don't have your own grow facility or anything like that. You'd be buying from another person that's growing, I'm assuming like a wholesaler and then going to them as, and then selling their product, so to speak. You Correct. know, and, and lack of better words, um, just kind of buying wholesale, selling retail, I guess. If you go into a designated person yeah. or a company within the state mm -hmm. that sells the product, exactly like the liquor industry yeah, yeah you have to go to specific vendors buy it from them everything's monitored mm -hmm. so but what, what, what are your products I'm, I'm very naive i don't use i don't know what you got so i'd like a description of what type of products if you go into your facility and you can't see anything and they're all under the counter what do you have a <laughs> list of what's available there'll be a menu a menu you have you love a menu Great. you walk into a place you have a menu It'll even be on the flat screen TVs. Uh, the products, why don't you elaborate here? So right now, you know, the products are kind of limited with Massachusetts still being new to getting things going. I'm sure you've seen on the news all the issues they're having with the CCC and approvals and all that stuff. So it's really, you know, you have some standard small edibles, gummies, um, gel caps, tinctures. Um, I believe they allowed the vape cartridges back again now for the marijuana only. Um, then you have the, the flour pre-roll joints. And that's pretty much what it is right now. As the market grows, I'm sure we'll see a lot more different varieties of edibles. You also have you know, some of the concentrates, like the shatter and the wax, which is a, a, you know, like a highly concentrated. Do you know, we take prescriptions? Would we be taking prescriptions? No, we're not gonna be a medical marijuana facility. It's recreational only. So, you know, as product availability grows, We'll be bringing in, you know, what, what's out there on the market that the manufacturers are supplying. Do you guys have any other questions, or I'm just you go, go ahead. I'm just curious. Question for for Lynn, I guess, Have <coughs> any of the other um, existing tenants in the building expressed any concern to you, or not at this point? Um, we have been in the very preliminary stages. Um, as the landlord, we condone the the use. Um, but we've not consulted with our tenants. We generally don't. What we try to do is complement the existing mix, and then as you know, property owners try to be strategic with the placement of said operations. Um, but we don't typically consult the tenants for for that type of operation. I just didn't know, if, like Jason Penny or mm -hmm. Planet Fitness or anybody. Like no, there are provisions in their lease that you know would limit you know manufacturing or certain types of, of uses um, that we have agreements with those. Um, with those companies, mm -hmm. but for, for this particular use, it's retail, it's, it would be allowed. Is there a possibility to put uh, an exterior door where all the customers would access the retail store through the outside of the mall versus the interior? I mean, that, I guess that would be a design thing that we would work with the owners on. It does have an exterior wall, and there is currently an exterior door. It was um, used primarily for deliveries, <coughs> Um, but I imagine we would need to go to the planning board to identify that as now a customer entrance. There had been one um, in the past in that area already for the bank that you mentioned, um, in that general area. So it's not unheard of and it is, you know, it's very comfortable and, um, you know, 
customer friendly already because it was at one point in time an area where customers would go in and out of some of those areas. But as a landlord, do you don't have any issue with working that exterior door? No, we wouldn't be opposed to it. I think the intent would be the visibility that the interior of the property for their benefit is, is there and for ours as well for customer comfort levels. Um, you know, so not it enclosed. Sure but just kind of how it would look on the outside, you know, it's very discreet. There's also discreet. another gate that drops down in the front uh, at night, you know. Customers so prefer an enclosed, yeah. so you know, kind of controlled shopping that environment. So the, I would say that the our preference would be that, but if like it that. was, if it was, you know, um, something we needed to consider, we would obviously discuss that. You have another facility some, somewhere else? No. We don't. This is your first. This is the first one. Yeah. So we have, we have uh, the person who's going to be my manager opened up, um, what do you call it? Uh, medical, medical marijuana. Medical marijuana in, in uh, New England, Connecticut. And they since sold their share out, but they will be coming in to manage and train and sort of hiring and, you know, they're bringing in all their experience into our store. So we, we do come with a lot of experience. And the medical, the medical marijuana, the way when they got their licenses and their standards are far higher than recreational. Is there another mall setting or is it a standalone setting that you've experienced so far? What was that? Was it in another mall? Standalones or a, a mall type setting? I've seen standalones, yeah. but I, honestly, I really feel that I know it's inside of mall and I, I know there might be, some people might have problems with that. But I think it's far more discreet inside of a mall. I think, like I said, it's not on the main road. It's not causing congestion. The facility of the mall is completely set up to, to, to base, basically service this type, this type of business. I think it's a, be a win-win for everybody. Win-win for the mall. Win-win for the for the tax tax type revenue. Win-win for us. We are exploring the use in our portfolio and other centers where it's allowed, where it's permissible. Great. Any, anything else? That's good. All right. Well, thank you for presenting to us and uh, coming today. And then we have our next um, possible uh, establishment is Midge Retail. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Selection Members of the Administrator. My name is Jim Valariani with the Menting Law Group. We are the law firm assisting the Mint Retail uh, Company with their various facilities that are currently under pursuit here in Massachusetts, including here in Hadley. Uh, with me tonight is Ivan Shahara from the yeah. company's president and founder. So flew into Bradley International at four o'clock today to be here. <laughs> <laughs> a little jet lag, but <laughs> thanks for coming. So I want to thank you guys. Yeah, Arizona. I want to thank you for your time and consideration in our application. We look forward to being a partner in the community and bringing our expertise and professionalism to to the town. Yes, our facility, as uh, we've presented at uh, 397 Russell Street, a standalone, currently an auto shop in Midas Chain. These are the type of standalone shops that Mint targets. He, uh, uh, Ivan, uh, likes uh, to be able to do a, a concrete standalone facility with full control of the lot, which we will have under our uh, contract to acquire the property, which has been executed. We, we do have typical contingencies, of course, for permitting and what have you. Uh, parking is adequate for that facility. We need to have twice the parking area to, to the footprint of the building. We have that. I do have a sketch that I pulled from the registry website. I don't have many of these, but they do show at least a, a rough uh, view of that. And we will provide proper site plans. And, <laughs> and there is a, a bird's eye view. <coughs> So although there are some wetlands, some, of uh, course, quite a few wetlands in the town of uh, uh, there are some uh, wetland areas uh, nearby, nearby all the properties in that area. We are not going to break any new ground. There is no need to expand that building. We'll be sailing up the bays. 
Uh, if that will allow for parking in front of the building, there is an egress, an ingress and an egress way already off of Route 9, Russell Street. Uh, it will be highly secured. We have a very elaborate and well-tested security plan that we present to the police departments. That is a very important part of obtaining the uh, host community agreement. A community uh, meeting, of course, would, uh, would, uh, would uh, come before the host agreement being signed by the town. And the licensing procedure with the state is very strict, and we've been through that with a number of clients, and we're working with Mint on a uh, cultivation facility in uh, the town of Palmer, which is going to be filed uh, first thing tomorrow morning. So uh, facilities in Beverly for cultivation and retail, Pittsfield for retail, and uh, facilities that are being pursued elsewhere in the country as well by Mint. Uh, very good staff, a very well experienced staff, and again, I, I, I don't have many uh, extra proposals, but you should have had uh, submitted the color copies of the conceptual design that Mint is seeking to achieve in uniformity, just to one moment, as well as the floor plan. Again, a very... Page 10, is that it? Yes, uh, thank you. Right you know the, uh, my proposal better than that. <laughs> but you see a similar on page 8, uh, a very similar conversion as to what we're seeking to achieve at 397 Muscle, a former garage facility converted to a retail dispensary. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what we're presenting in other towns as well. Mm -hmm. In some instances, a gabled roof to that's what's sought by the, uh, the, the, the applicable board, planning, the zoning, uh, selectmen. We can do a gable roof for New England uh, uh, facade type uh, finish. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we have shown that in some of the materials we submitted in our request. The material of the store, a waiting area. As you can see, the, the interiors, and again, you should have all received these in the conceptual plans we are presenting. Yep. Yep. Well, and our uh, floor plan, very uniform for the main chain. Uh, very uh, uh, well uh, planned security for these facilities. Uh, very uh, 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 adaptive, the secure, security lighting, the downcast lighting, the other building. Of course, nothing can be displayed from the street or the parking area. So. That, that it, there can be some signage to identify the property and, and the type of use, but a very uh, tasteful, very tasteful signage, and no product would be visible as required by the laws, uh, <coughs> Chapter 94G. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know what else to present. We're not concerned about any wetlands. If there are, that's a very Common undertaking, permitting undertaking to manage. We can certainly do erosion control, sedimentation control uh, around the perimeter of the building mm -hmm. during the renovation. How many other locations do you have? Um, we currently have two operating in Arizona, a more vertical, um, so cultivation, processing, manufacturing, um, and retail. Several sites in Michigan that are approved, uh, one of which will open hopefully this month. Um, and we're pursuing our third location here in Massachusetts. Uh, the max allowed is three, so we're hoping that this will be a third. And I'm sorry, but and just recently I uh, got a water license in Missouri. Do you, since you have facilities operating, you kind of know what the market is. Correct. Do you see any issues with uh, market saturation with uh, three facilities within a two mile radius? Um, so I'll give you an idea, our Tempe location, uh, there are eight retail facilities within a five mile radius. Um, and then because of the product knowledge, um, the way we train our butt tenders, if you will, um, the type of products that we have, the different variety of products that we have, we've been able to uh, stay above the competition and make sure that we get people coming in and serving properly. And answer some of your concerns on products in this market um, until our facilities are up and going. Uh, we have created relationships with our current manufacturers here. Um, Siri Naturals, they're actually a multi-state operator. Uh, we have dealings with them in other states. Uh, they just expanded their facility to 60,000 square feet uh, for cultivation. So we're going to be buying products from them. Where are they? Facilities. Uh, so they have three retail facilities, uh, Somerville, Cambridge, and another one. Um, and their production facility is somewhere in the center of Mass. Not sure exactly where, but. And you are 
facility in Palmer. You're going for that tomorrow. Cultivation is going to be tomorrow. Yes. We also have a vertical site in uh, Beverly. So it's going to be a retail manufacturing and cultivation. As wide as you choose this area? Um, we like dealing with smaller towns. Um, we like a better relationship. We feel we can walk in and have a conversation with somebody as opposed to bigger towns where you walk in and you'll never get to the real conversation. The five college area wasn't a draw shape. Um, that is <laughs> we are pursuing a retail yeah. facility in the Metro Boston community as well right now. It's not far enough along, but I can attest that. And the products facility. would be the same as the other facility, or do you have any other products that you would be selling? We do. So we have some more that are dedicated to medical. So some tinctures, some patches um, to also give the medical patients what they need. Um, but we will be manufacturing our own edibles, cultivating our own flour, um, as well as different customers. And would this facility be medical as well as uh, adult use, or is it just adult use? Just adult just use. Yeah, just adult use here in Hazlitt. Yeah, yeah. I just was confirming it. But medical patients can obviously walk into yeah, a come retail in. store and mm -hmm. want to have the adequate products for everybody. Mm -hmm. so go ahead. When you reviewed the um, uh, so I'm assuming David and you, yep. the two of them? Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, when you did your initial review um, in terms of the RFP requirements, both both parties meet the requirements, all of that's been vetted? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, from the building commissioner's perspective and, um, you know, any zoning restrictions, there was nothing that was identified in our screening that raised any red flags. That's kind of why we're here tonight is kind of figuring out, mm -hmm. you know, both proposals are adequate in the eyes of um, on paper the general box yeah, is the yeah. part. Yeah. If I may, in, in closing, yeah. our, our uh, community impact fee is, uh, is uh, the uh, highest amount that can be uh, uh, arranged under the host community agreement process, 3% of the gross revenue per year, <coughs> total five years, and we are now in strict compliance with uh, that being the maximum. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anything else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more questions. questions. Do you have any more questions? Anything else for Ivan before he uh, heads back? Are you going to Missouri after this or are you going back to Arizona? <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, yeah. 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 That is probably just. Oh, yeah. Are, are there any comments from the audience? Anybody? We did invite some. Uh, put some things out there for public comments. I don't know if anybody's one. here for that. Yeah. I have one in relationship to you folks. Um, I have our office manager actually. Um, her, her son races at the mall. He also races at Stafford. And she's very concerned about having the stuff in the mall. It's it's just I, I think that it's a it's not a, a wonderful idea. You've got kids all around that mall. Where do they go on vacations? Where do they go Friday nights, Saturday nights? There's a lot of things. You've got skating there. You've got laser tag. Don't you think that these kids don't? I mean, my kid's old now. I mean, she's already 20, so she better know better. But um, these kids. What exactly is your concern? Is your concern them going in, going into the facility and purchasing something, or the visibility? What, what exactly is the concern? I don't think it's a Thank good idea to have it's to have a place you. like this where the kids congregate. I really don't. I don't think it's appropriate. If it's down the road or somewhere away from there, that's a different situation. But kids know what's going on. I think they'll see it on the street a uh, lot sooner than will the mall. But Lynn, you want to like, we talked about this a little bit. It's located in the, in the part of the mall where. I know where it is, the ground round, the it's, old it's, round. It's towards, it's, it's it's towards the just end. The, end. We, the GNC. We worked with the mall and. Um, Away from those facilities. I know this. Okay. I, I've, I've been here since 1988. I'm very familiar with well, the area. All right. Thank you. I think that's good. Thank you both for your comments. Is anyone else here from the for public comment? No. All right. Uh, so we have a decision in front of us. I don't know if we want to think about it a little bit. If we I'd want like to, to postpone it because I'm sure there's going to be more public comment, and I'd like to hear the, the input from from the public. I myself feel exactly like she does. The malls went through the no smoking. It, it attracts a lot of kids, young adults, 
and underage kids, and I just don't feel like that's the place to put it. You know? mm -hmm. Anyone else have any thoughts? Uh, I, think you, I think you all know how I feel on it anyway. I don't need to yeah. go into that tonight. But, but it's legal and it's here. So. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, legal yeah. and it's here. I'm, I'm an old nurse and I work in an office where I have to queue up some um, narcotic prescriptions and a lot of this starts with this. So, you know, that's my take on it, but I'm, I'm open minded. So, David, do we have any legal requirements for staff by a certain date? Yeah, and I think it would be, in a situation like this, it's helpful to kind of think through yeah. the criteria, you know, that we should be making a judgment on. And um, I think I'd like to get the police chief's opinion, too. On, on the one yeah. hand, intellectually, I do understand the argument that, in a way, the mall has more security than, than the standalone. You know, um, you have certainly the, understand you have, the issues we've had. Police chief, you have fire, and you have building inspectors, so yeah. they all should chime in on it before yeah. I make a decision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, I would definitely like to hear that. Yeah. The public and, and, and our, our officials, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay. having said that, I think we should, in the, in the spirit of fair play, we should try to make decisions quickly as we can. Um, and Do we have a meeting next week? Or? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks? March 18th. So we could we could bring put it back on the agenda for that and and try to come to a decision at that time. Well, that gives us two weeks for public comment. So yeah, yeah. Hear from the community. I think that's fair with uh, you two. Uh, better interested in it. Yes. Yes. yes of course. Okay. If I may, though, uh, uh, there's nothing else you uh, require of the uh, proposers at this moment in time. Correct. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think there's a possibility that questions may come up in the process, I especially if, we're, if there's public more public input, and so in that case, I think in, we would need to coordinate to make sure that both parties have the opportunity to respond to okay. that kind of thing. The yeah. administrator's got your numbers anyway, yeah. so as Perfect. the questions come in, we can contact the both of you. And we'll uh, keep our eyes on your agenda postings and perhaps stay in touch with the town administrator's office and uh, yeah, yeah. perhaps be back here on we'll, the 18th. We'll put it on the agenda for next the, the next meeting, which is the 18th. Very good. And we'll try to do a similar time to do it, you know, First thing. Very yeah. Good. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for coming and presenting to us and, and applying as Any well. Questions? Thank you for coming to have it. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah. Thank you. Or if anybody wants to come to Arizona, you can get the <laughs> More than welcome. Sounds like fun. Out there. <laughs> Phoenix area. Perfect weather right now. Yeah. Okay. So we have. Um, Two new committees that I would like to uh, suggest that the uh, select board uh, give give approval to. Uh, there are two committees. Uh, we can start with the Housing and Economic Development Committee. Uh, we just met tonight, but uh, sorry, pulling up my document here. But uh, this committee would be. Um, Basically, looking as an advisory committee to the select board, uh, we have two people that are interested in co-chairing the committee, one of them being Molly, another one being uh, Dylan Mance. Uh, we have several members already on the committee. It would be a mixed committee with representation from both the select board and the planning board, and up to nine members from the community. Uh, this would be uh, identifying the current inventory of housing in Hadley, exploring resources available to build new affordable housing and improve the quality of existing housing throughout the community, exploring exclusionary land use practices that inhibit development of new affordable housing near transit and jobs, uh, working with neighboring universities to quantify the need for student housing, identifying possible areas where future development and community central social district enhancement is possible, um, identifying alternative zoning and uses while continuing to boost up Hadley's agricultural heritage and partner with outside organizations to form strategic plans and support entrepreneurial efforts. And to sum all that up is basically, you know, we've heard a lot in the community that there isn't a place for 
starting families to afford a house in Hadley. It affects our school systems. Um, it affects our tax revenue, our infrastructure. This is a way to kind of enhance that and try to find ways that Hadley can um, digest that would enhance our development and our future. So that is one committee. <laughs> and, um, I don't know if you guys have any questions. The other point I think that should be made is the intent. Um, this would be an advisory committee. The, the committee would be doing a lot of legwork that the select board and planning board might not, not otherwise have the opportunity to do. Um, and a, uh, you know, right now, Bill Dwyer from the planning board is participating. So that would also um, kind of afford an opportunity for some uh, more cohesiveness between the planning board and the select board that we've, we've struggled a little bit in the past mm -hmm. by yeah. having um, representation from both the Yeah, and we could really, I feel like, partner on some projects mm -hmm. and gain mm -hmm. some common knowledge, mm -hmm. speak the same language, and work together on a lot of these issues. So it um, could be valuable. So are you going to be able to do this well mm -hmm. after your across the board? Oh, yes. I should have more time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just asking. <laughs> so, what's going to be kind of the committee's first goal? Or first, what's your first thing to tackle? The first thing would be basically, actually, Haley is here tonight. We are we are going to meet with her maybe because she has some experience in this realm in other towns, not to put you on the mm -hmm. spot, but <laughs> you, your name was ringing tonight. We thought we'd meet with you. But also, um, uh, Amy Fiden is also interested in being on this committee. She sits on the Valley CDC, and you're thinking of trying to meet some with them as well to just talk to them about their experience with projects in Amherst and Northampton. And just kind of, I think the first goal is trying to gain some more knowledge on the committee and try to gain some understanding, and then <coughs> start going from there. There's also some cross collaboration with what's happening with the Russell School right now. So that, that future is to be determined, and this would kind of help educate us all in getting to do some other things in town. And, um, Working in conjunction with the master building. Yeah. Well, yeah, the planning board would be on it, planning so. Right. Well, I mean, people, we're Oh, municipal people building committee. Municipal building. Yeah. Um, and Dylan yeah. and Mance is on, so, so yeah, there's some, A crossover. there's some crossover yeah. going on here. I mean, right now, the, um, the people that expressed an interest from day one. Oh, yeah. So it's uh, Emma Dragon, Sean Berry, Bill Dwyer, Christian, Amy Fiden, me, Dylan Mance, who's also on a new member of the Finance Committee and the Russell School Committee, um, Mark Howard, and Joanne Katz, who said she'd be uh, willing to be So make a motion to establish the Economic uh, Development Committee and appoint those members that are listed there. Second. Great. For All how those, long term? Uh, for two years. Yeah, we we're looking at a two year term. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Yeah, I was. I don't know how we're gonna do it. Planner. We're still got that in order. We're hoping the planner would be part of this committee as well. But we didn't mention that because we don't have a planner yet. <laughs> There's a lot of open ends. Uh, yeah, I mean, we need somebody in town to be able to drive things forward, too. That's always the thing. So having the planner be able to do that would be great. Um, and then my second committee is the Hadley Climate Committee. Um, right now, there's interest from uh, Jack Sikowski to be chair, um, Jean Jeannie Armstrong, who was here uh, several weeks ago uh, talking about this. Um, secretary, that's still to be, to be determined. Somebody decided to step, step away from the committee today, but um, uh, I would be the select board liaison. And then Stephen Armstrong, uh, Michael Doctor, and Joanne Goding would also be on this committee. And this, uh, this one has, we're thinking, you know, climate change here in Hadley, but I think this one is a little bit more um, mission driven in the sense that uh, we want to look at the current ecological footprint of the town, um, look at information about potential actions the town could take to reduce that footprint, and then help to the town evaluate, choose and implement actions that promote sustainable practices and over time monitor changes in the town's ecological footprint. So one of the major 
near-term goals of this is to look at all the utility usage in town and put a number to that carbon footprint and then be able to look at our historical usage of that and then kind of track it moving forward and if there's any recommendations we could make to reduce that so it's it's pretty simple there could be broader visions here and other side things to go but uh trying to keep it kind of focused in that realm right now and uh, this is a group that's excited to work on that type of project and I think you know maybe making this even just a one-year committee and looking at it into the future would be good as it kind of has some goals right now and evolving it if it if it so desires would you would you also imagine that this committee might um, there might be some <laughs> In crossover with like the shade tree committee uh, you know i'm thinking about yeah like, there, there's a movement right now in, in terms of uh, promoting rain barrels and, and pollinator gardens and things like that you know planting more trees there could be and that was a lot of the talk that we, when we've met is i think this is something that kind of needs to spread amongst other committees that are mm -hmm. already in town and kind of come together so municipal building committee mm -hmm. should be part of this jack was at the municipal last municipal building committee meeting to talk to them about it mm -hmm. um and so the girl, uh, was it um uh, markowski right yeah oh yeah the, um, communities. she came in and did the presentation yeah. yeah i'd love to get some student involvement in this mm -hmm. too That'd because be nice. i think that it you i was working earlier on in the year with ann mckenzie there was a lot of excitement in the schools about this climate topic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I would love to get some younger people involved in this and a way for them to also get involved in the town. Mm -hmm. We're way past climate control with 40,000 cars a day going through the town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy pass, man. Just set up one of those bars. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion that we have uh, for this committee for, I'll say for a two-year period, just look okay. at one and yeah. uh, appoint yeah. these volunteers as well. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We just wanted to pull up your schedule now that the senior center is winding down. Right? Yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> so bored. <laughs> Got nothing to do. Um, <laughs> Lord, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's enjoy a little presentation here. Uh, Enterprise Fund Administrative Charges. Linda and David have joined us tonight to talk about this uh, controversial topic about the, the administrative charges from enterprise funds and trying to make this uh, yearly budget calculation a little more transparent, a little more clear for people to be able to figure out where all the numbers come from. Um, we have some great goals of trying to make these enterprise funds more solvent and yet still be fair in their, um, their impact on the town broader uh, government structure. So with that, David, okay. I'll, I'll hand it over to you. So we've had an uh, administrative uh, charges associated with the three enterprise funds for many years. Uh, we put together a thorough um, formula and there's been a number of concerns raised for us. So the select board has asked me to uh, Select board asked me to uh, recalculate the uh, the administrative charges. Uh, Linda Sanderson, if he's in the room, deserves there you are, yeah, deserves yes. an enormous amount of credit for uh, going through the numbers. Uh, so we have three uh, enterprise funds, Sewer, Water, and Hadley Media. They're governed by Mass General Law Chapter 44, <coughs> Section 53, F and 1 half. Uh, there's a, uh, a link to the uh, Department of Revenue guide book for enterprise funds. Purpose of administrative charges is to apportion hidden costs to taxpayers back to each enterprise fund so that there are no hidden taxpayer costs. And so 
in 2013, we adopted a unified formula that was transparent, rational, comprehensive, fair, and supported by a documented uh, methodology. And by the way, if anybody wants to hand out their idea on the table. Uh, the formula was used from 2013 to 2020 when the board requested the formula be revisited and the town administrator treasurer recalculated the formula which is presented here for discussion. The current formula, the one that we're using right now in this current uh, fiscal year, requires three to four people to assemble. Uh, its preparation is restricted to no earlier than January, February for the data to be available. Um, and But the, the good thing is that the charges that are calculated are actually based on actual data. The propor proposed formula can be completed much more quickly by two people, can be calculated at any time after the end of the fiscal year, and again, very quickly, and results in charges that are based upon not actuals, but estimates and averages. Um, it does result in a reduction of money from the enterprise funds to the general fund for this coming fiscal year of $109,000. So there's a trade-off there. It takes some pressure off of the enterprise fund uh, in terms of insolvency, but it does mean that the general fund is shy of $109,000. Let's just watch for all three. That's yes. combined. That's all right. I uh, don't know if I can. Well, the hand out does. Pass the hand out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the first part, the enterprise fund indirect costs, okay, for salaries. Uh, salaries for procurement, town administrator, accounting, treasurer's department, human resources, and building maintenance. Um, an amount is calculated, uh, they're $319,000, and I think I need my own hand on here so that I can see the numbers. $319,000, and then that's compared to the water department salaries, the salaries for the sewer department, and then for the Hadley Media. And percentages are arrived in the box on the right hand side. The calculations are done. The 319,000 is multiplied by the 3.3%, 2.8%, and 0.1% uh, for the three enterprise funds. And then there's uh, an amount that's captured in there. So David, that's the first David, calculation. David. Be before we go on, because this is one that might be revisited, can yeah, I explain I'll, a little bit I'll, more? I'll come, I'll come back. You'll come back to it. Okay. All right. So A2, the enterprise and direct costs for the collector's office. You uh, remember the, the lineup of the departments of the salaries we were calculating. Um, we left out the collector's office because the collector's office is very heavily engaged in uh, supporting water and sewer and no, not at all engaged in supporting Hadley Media. So in addition to the uh, salaries, we have to think about the amount of bills that are associated with water and sewer at 50 cents each, and it comes up to a percentage for just the collectors. 22.8% per for water, 10.05% uh, for a sewer, and Hadley Media, again, she does nothing to support them, so there's no cost there. So that's an additional salary indirect cost that has to be uh, added into the calculations. A three enterprise fund indirect costs with benefits for town hall staff. So here's one of the first uh, uh, estimates. So we take all the benefits associated with town hall staff for retirement, workers' comp, unemployment, health insurance, and we come up with an average cost per employee, which is 25.5%. So if you're going to hire somebody at $50,000, you have to add another 25.5% to cover the salary. So that's the, that's the average here. Again, these are run for the three enterprise funds in the right-hand box on the final calculations. 
That's all departments, though. That's, that's all just the part town mm -hmm. hall. Yeah. That's right. Okay. All right. Town hall expenses. So we've dealt with the salary. Now there's the expenses. So we put together the expenses for the procurement and select board, town administrator, accounting department, treasury department, collector, legal, human resources, insurance, town hall, and building maintenance for town hall only. And you come up with $423,000 and change. Compare that to the expenses for water, sewer, and Hadley, and you come up with percentages, 7.8% for water, 5.9% for sewer, and a half a percent for Hadley Media. You run these together uh, on the right-hand box, and we make a special adjustment for Hadley Media because um, they are housed in the library. So there's seven thousand one hundred sixty-seven dollars of library expenses that has to be apportioned to Hadley Media. Then we have a total of all the indirect costs. So eight. 8-1, 8-5-2, 8-3, and 8-4 comes up with a subtotal for the indirect salary, collectors, uh, expenses, and benefits uh, for each enterprise fund. The next part of the formula uh, goes back to the average of 25.5% per uh, employee for benefits. And we, uh, rather than calculating out the actual benefits for, uh, for um, the, the water and sewer departments, we're just using the average of 25.5%, and it, that achieves this calculation. And David, I'm yeah. assuming the point there is that in the spirit of consistency that right. as people change their benefit packages and everything, you're not tying yourself into a knot trying to figure out every year who's taking what. Who's right, that, that was that was a major source of yeah. uh, labor that uh, we needed to <coughs> utilize mm -hmm. uh, actual data. We also had a HIPAA concern um, in that some of these uh, enterprise funds have so few employees that we were in danger of revealing um, information about health insurance uh, that would have been a uh, possible violation of HIPAA rules. Mm -hmm. So by using the averages, we can get away from that concern. Then we have the unfunded liabilities. The first one is the OPEB, other post-employment benefits. We take the total of liability payment of $263,000. We uh, uh, run that through the total salaries. We uh, come up with percentages for water, sewer, and Hadley Media. And the first box to the right shows the final calculation for the enterprise fund's uh, contribution to the OPEB liability payment. The second one is the retirement contribution. And I guess this falls under the category of the careful of what you wish for. As we were diving into the numbers, it became clear that the general fund has been funding 100% of the total li uh, retirement liability for years and years and years. And the enterprise funds have not. Um, and it became increasingly obvious that for a fair and transparent and rational system of apportioning hidden costs that we needed to uh, start accounting for the uh, retirement liability payment. We have a figure there of $74,000, which is labeled total retirement liability payment. That actually is an incorrect label. That is the increase in the liability from one year to the next. If we were to use the total liability, we'd be using a number of $979,000, which would increase the assessment to the three enterprise funds by $57,000. Uh, the town is just beginning to look at the retirement liability. Uh, it seemed fair that given that we're focused in on the incremental increase from one year to the next, 
that we use the seventy-four thousand dollar figure rather than the total. And there we are at the end. Grand total is A plus B plus C, and we come up with a grand to total of three hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars. And how does that compare to the old method? That's a hundred and nine thousand oh, dollars less. Just so people at home that are watching can be clear, the hundred nine thousand dollars is basically us paying ourselves for services in various departments. Right. We're not really losing that hundred nine thousand dollars with the tax money. To it. Right. 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 So we ran we ran this calculation uh, uh, by the financial management team. Linda was there. Christian, you were there. Ed, you were there. Um, and um, there were a number of suggestions. One suggestion was to uh, modify this formula by taking out the school salaries and expenses. Um, if we did that, that would add another $37,000 into the transfer between the enterprise funds and the general fund. Um, the other and why would you take the schools out? Well, that I guess that, that was my suggestion. I, I think that if you look at these percentages, if we go to the slide A1, okay. mm -hmm. um, uh, if you look at, we have total salaries, $10 million in the town, right? Mm -hmm. It's saying, but that's, in my mind, what we're looking at there is how much of town hall time is spent on these, fu these enterprise funds. So. If you think about how much time town hall as a functional body spends on the schools, is that 50% of town hall's time in comparison to 3% for water, 3% for sewer, and 0.17% for Hadley Media. Yeah, but isn't that all factored into the net school spending formula? Isn't there, there's a whole other formula where you take... All I'm saying is, we're looking at town hall, the impact of these enterprise funds on town hall. Are we? Or are we looking at a, on the budget? You're looking at the budget the overall. You've got the schools added in there, all the staff at, at town hall, total expenses. But, but we're looking at the town, funds. this A1 enterprise fund indirect cost salaries. That's the salaries, the contribution of these funds on the salaries of people in town hall. So we're looking 319, 763, we're multiplying all these percentages by. And what we're including, what these percentages are calculated by this total number, which includes the schools. So this is the amount of time, in my mind, mm -hmm. that town hall spends this percent with the amount of time town hall spends on these different departments. And so that's all the time the town administrator spends, all the time procurement spends, all the time accounting and treasurer department, mm -hmm. human resources. Mm -hmm. You know, human resources, when somebody wants to hire a new teacher at the school, they're not coming to Ed to hire that teacher. They are doing payroll and different yeah. things, yeah. but they aren't necessarily mm -hmm. using that function as much as the DPW and Hadley Media would be. Sure, but who does uh, like the employee benefits and everything are all hand I, I, I know, know, but it just seemed like to me that that um, that way if you look at it the other way and put the school on here, then fifty percent of all these things would be would be fifty percent of everyone in town hall's time would be spent on the schools. If we broke it down this way. I don't know. No, <laughs> I'm I, not arguing. I, no, I, I, I understand. <laughs> Losing you or? No, I, I understand the argument. Yeah. And it, I'm just thinking well, part of the reason we're doing this is to try to simplify it. And I just worry is, you know, what if we have shared services with the schools at some point? Are we going to keep coming back? And we are doing about their own that. accounting. Never went anywhere with it. No. Is it again? They're running through the accounting. So they're running their accounting now through our accounting. Uh, instead we're of having new, we're on the, we, we are supposed to be on the new method. We're not quite up and running yet with uh, the new firm. Okay. The administration, we assist them with your union contracts as well. We sit at the table and 
That's true. I, I mean, I'm not saying that if they when don't you spend into any it, time. It actually builds up. You know? Yeah, I'm just saying if you looked at the percentage of time. If we remove that amount of salaries, wouldn't that drastically increase the... It would increase it about $37,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. all the salaries are gone, so now it's taking up theoretically much more town hall time than yeah. including those salaries. Right. Yeah. That, that thing, the percentage has come up by the, the total salaries is the denominator. Right. Yeah. So um, Christian's saying, what, what, when we look at it, we say, well, what percentage of total town salaries is the water department, is the sewer department? So um, there's no problem coming up with a numerator because those are your own salaries. Yeah. So what are we dividing up by total town salaries? And that's, that's how we're getting there. And if you use total sal town salaries without the school, instead of being 10,000, it's now 4,000 because they're about 60%. I think we estimated the other day at the meeting of the uh, about 50%, yeah. but they're actually more like 60% of it. So that's another way of uh, getting it so that perhaps um, for one example, uh, if it uh, using um, Christian's suggestion, water department salaries would be considered 8.4% uh, of the total, as opposed to here is 3.39. And Christian's saying, well, really, probably the eight's a better approximation of the time they actual actually usage of town hall hours than the other. But so it's another way. another way of doing it. But we can't when it comes to um, uh, estimating the uh, when we want to figure out what percentage of the total salaries are benefits, we have to. That's how we ended up. But that's well, how that's we started what using. Have to we we use the full amount there. No, 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 no. But OPEB yeah. wouldn't be included because yeah. that is town wide. Right. Right. Anything that, related to benefits so that's, is it's only this would, section. Just only this. Yes. Only so a it's one. only this one section. Mm -hmm. Everything else is, in my mind, completely fair because it right. divvies it up. It's OPEB. It's insurance. It's benefits, and that does cover every employee in town. It's, it's only right here where this is kind of narrowing in on how much of town hall as a body's time is spent on these enterprise funds. So, so I don't know, I just... Yeah, I, I, I get yeah. your argument. Well, you. only because we've been arguing about this for so many years and I can see if, if we introduce another variable, variable. Yeah. then somebody's gonna come to the table and say, wait a minute, all of the borrowing that the treasurer's department did this year happened to be for the schools. So why, why aren't we doing? You know, where yeah. another year is going to be all sewer. There you go. And, and I, yep. I'm just yep. afraid we're going to wind up going back to where we were. This is uh, something we can review whenever we want, right? As far as the chargeback one. Actually, we've got a library that we're building. We've got a senior center that we're building, and we've got a fire this, station. Yeah. No, no, I'm just. That's taken up. 99% of the town hall time in the last two years. But that, that's my point. So at any any given point in time, as these different projects roll through, somebody could be at the table making an argument, no, no, not this year. This year we need to change the formula because, and I, I think we want to get away from all of that. I think this is good to at least give it a try for what FY22 is yeah. the effect for. 21. 21, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. One more argument on this is we're dropping <laughs> this fee, this chargeback by $109,000. That's a lot to drop in one year. We're gonna take it out of your salary. That, yeah, take it out of my salary, <laughs> but that's the difference between having a full-time and a part-time planner. Um, that is a significant drop, and I feel like just taking that big of a chunk out in one year, defining the formula, has a pretty big impact on our overall budget where we're scraping by in other areas. I'm not saying it's right. There's an argument for just doing it this way and sticking to it, but it is a, a big chunk out of our budget we're taking out by losing this money. And what what do we, we're kind of, we are robbing Peter to pay Paul in this circumstance a little bit. And it's 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 a tricky one, it's a tricky hurdle. And we, did, we did that originally when we went from funding it out of general government yeah. to funding it out of the enterprise loans. And that's the whole point. This, yeah. this, is, this is the question I have. And part of the problem is the enterprise, the enterprise funds are in much more shape than the, I know. the town as a whole. I, it's tricky. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. It's I mean, definitely a balancing. I mean, it, we, we, we are yeah, boosting them up with this for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's the alternate argument yeah. side of what well, I'm we can phase it in, we can do That's an incremental say, approach to it and, and cut it, cut this decrease in half or something like that and then do a lesser amount, David, and for the first year and then jump to this one for the next year. Is that? Could we do that and pass the accounting 
Uh, yes, uh, I think the rational and transparent way for that would be to take a look at the unfunded pension liability and, and say that we're going to, we're going to start um, apportioning a higher amount than we currently are. Uh, mind you, we started at zero, and now we're just looking at one year yeah. increase. Yeah. So you can, you can do that. Uh, we can take a look at it. A couple things to, to, to uh, just point out is that one of the concerns by the select board is that under the old formula, some of the uh, fund, the source uh, numbers were not as transparent as people would have liked. And Linda has been able to tie every single number into a beta report. So we can address that. That's true. We were, I know. I know. Is it, uh, I know you can look at this for the first time and say this is simple. And actually, <laughs> there are only so many inputs here. Actually, I was going to make that comment. I agree with it. Um, because it, there, it is, there are those formulas, but coming up with a formula is one thing, and then coming up with the figures that went in is another. And we had to get certain figures from the accountant, and then we had uh, what's now HR. Joan would spend a lot of time figuring out, okay, now which employee, okay, and what are their what are their insurance, and then adjusting the figures. So, so during a particular budget year, we might be changing that figure two or three times. We're trying to keep up. We're trying to keep up with real figures, current figures, and then um, there would be some lopsided things happening such as let's say you have one person in town hall going on to a family plan or coming off of a planning family plan a oh, family plan a family plan <laughs> and um, it would make a big difference all of a sudden we're charging water more for a town hall employee so that's why we wanted to use this this right so we needed then the figures to come from one place once a year, and at this point, actually, we don't even require HR anymore. We print out the beta reports, all total salaries, total benefits, um, total uh, expenses. You take this figure and this figure, and you put them into the into the formula. So if someone walked in from sewer department and said, "What's uh, where these come from?" I go, "Okay, here's our four reports. Here they are." And the year they are is the most recent closed one. We're using fiscal 19 because that's the closed year. That's it. We have actual figures. We're not using budgeted figures, and we're not using figures that are changing during the year. We're using the last actual figures, and some things might change, such as we add HR department, we switch our accounting, we do various things. That'll come out because because the next year you're going to be using the next year, so it'll, it'll work out. Um, so. Yes. That's it. Basically, David and I can now, now once we spent months coming up with the <laughs> spreadsheet, we could probably, with a new year, have it within a day. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other the other thing is, is that uh, there were some technical questions having to do with source material and source data and setting the tax rates. So we'll just get everybody that does that work in the room and iron out that issue. Financial management team had questions about this, but they thought that this was a good start. Yeah, I, I mean, I, in the spirit of, um, I, I agree with you. You hate to have that accounting shock, mm -hmm. but by the same token, I don't want to create something else that's just because we're, we're trying to mitigate yeah. that. You know, you want to kind of go to the right thing, and I'm just wondering, this is a change in accounting method, so it's a question for um, maybe Melanson Heath to see if there is a way for us to kind of phase it in over a two-year period and maybe have a footnote disclosure or something out there. I mean, I know I'm not really following the phase in what you're, what you're talking about. Just not doing the between the old method and the new method, like having right. a middle. Third method? Of the no, 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 no. I think it's sticking. It's, it's sticking with this method, but how do we phase it in instead of just like yeah. one instead year? Instead of a hundred nine thousand yeah. dollar immediate impact, is there a way for oh, us to go to the bottom line and take a percentage of yeah. that? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and, this and is this is going to be ongoing. It's going to be a hundred nine every year. It depends on the percentage. Well, this is a one time. This would be a one time change, yeah. really, yeah. that drastically, and then everything else would be a curve in relation to. How the numbers fit World into the world. overall number? Uh, you know, it wouldn't. It won't be 109 every year yeah. next year for because this is for the planning budget 21. When we come to bu uh, doing budget 22, or and we close fiscal 20, we're going to print those reports 
and put them through and we'll come up Just with go out the average of year we'll, do, we'll do the next the next year's figures so we'll always be kind of a year behind but um, over time it, it just will work out thank okay. you for tying the numbers to yeah solid yeah. things because you'll that's have the a more accurate number to the percentage yeah and, and based on this right. method too we can theoretically project these values based right. on budget projections so in these method. areas we, we you could, know if only our yeah. you know if yeah. only <laughs> We Especially could. benefits. We could. Yeah. Benefits. Oh, benefits. Yeah. I mean, your regular budgeting yeah. is, is is very accurate, but it is very yeah. difficult sometimes to, to with the, the benefits. Yeah, benefits. Yeah. So, can I make a motion that we approve this formula? <coughs> we'll try to implement it at fifty percent of the impact to the bottom line if it's approved by the accountant. If not, I'd like to proceed with this as presented. Okay. And just so a little bigger context, uh, the balanced budget that I submitted uh, back in February takes into account these numbers that I've just presented. The so new numbers. Okay. Uh, the numbers that show a hundred and nine thousand uh, dollar decrease from the transfer. No problem. Anytime. All right. Modify that. We'll strike that. I make a motion that we implement this with a hundred nine thousand dollar effect since we've already taken into the budget. There's no uh, stepping into it slowly. Well, <laughs> friendly, friendly yeah, amendment. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I would like to research the <coughs> possibility of a phase out, no. and to the extent that we can I find a way to do it, I'd rather free up that fifty thousand to use for the budget. Oh, I'm 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 Yep. If, if yeah, we can take yeah. it. get <laughs> a, a viable accounting way to handle it, and then if not, then we would we would absolutely go with it as presented. I will accept your change to my motion. <laughs> <laughs> you said that was a second. Yeah. <laughs> a third. All right. Any further discussion? I have a question. Oh, uh, I I thought you said auditor before, and then when your motion you said accountant. So what kind of verification are you looking for? Well, I would think it has to be. Potentially the Depart Department of Revenue, but I, I'm thinking Melanson Heath. Yeah, okay, the, that's okay. The yeah. auditor. Okay. Right. <laughs> any any further discussion? <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, let's just go real quick here. Ratification of parking requirements on West Street Common. You mind if we just do that real quick? Mark, Mark, we got a. Mark's been here for a while. I would have jumped it up okay. sooner. Everybody's been here for a while. It's a long meeting. I'm sorry. We didn't even get to the budget or the warrant this meeting. Yeah. David, did you have something on that? The ratification of the parking. Uh, yes. And what what the plan is there? So we ended up putting up some after the. Uh, Tommy Weinstein came in the last meeting and we had some parking issues on uh, the common. So what we did is we, the DPW, put up some no parking signs in front of his residence, basically on the uh, house side mm -hmm. of West Street, which would be the west side of the street, and um, in a hopes to keep his front lawn cleared and the mailboxes and things like that. And then um, Esalon uh, volunteered to uh, do some some repairs to the common and the the sidewalk area as well, which were done um, at least temporarily until the weather improves where the grass could be planted, something along those lines. So um, I think we needed to vote on the actual confirming where the no parking signs were put up. Okay. So, uh, second. Or Two seconds. Yeah. Okay. Pretty hard Any? with the no parking signs facing the road rather than facing the direction of travel. I think they have to be facing the road, though. Scott, though. Yeah, they're supposed to be the way we have them. Are. And we, we did change them the other day. I remember talking to you about actually getting the arrow ones. They have been installed. Okay. So they have to be par basically parallel. Yes. Because right. okay. they're pretty hard to read when somebody come in. And kind of sparsely distributed out on that side. So um, I think there's some confusion as to where if people can park there or not. So, so it would be helpful to have more signs on that side. Scott, can you look to see if they could use another another sign or two in that area just to um, make it clear so there's not a large space between the signs? Yeah, we can add if you want. Just if, if you think it'll be warranted in that area. Too. Whatever you feel necessary, it just uh, the more signs we put up, the 
the look goes away, I guess. Right. But it's up to you guys. If you want more, we'll gladly put them up. Okay. Alright. We've made a motion. Yeah, then. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Alright. Thank you. Did you want to say something about the did you did you have something else to say? Uh, I just wanted to say we're you know we're working diligently to alleviate the problem that has been occurring and we'd be happy to have the comment back to its original state. Um, it was a very difficult fix a couple weeks ago to um, with the frozen ground and standing water. Um, there's an odd pitch on the common there. I think there's been water there for maybe somebody knows better than I forever. The straw looks good, but the cars are still parking on top of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So in the next couple of weeks with the DPW's approval, we would go back to it and make it as like new and like some seeds and such. Sounds good. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, well, let's do uh, Chris, you had a comment? Or? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The, the east side of West Street, I, are you approving that there should be no pipe, there should be, it should be left alone? Because even with the work here, Mark is doing, people are still parking there. The, so are you, are you, are you the board? allowing it to be in that format because if the board allows it to be in that format the way it is right now my view is that uh, we we'll, we'll have people parking on the east side because we have sign on the west side so is the board do you can the board that permit us to put sign on both sides both east and west side if we're trying to prevent no parking i don't know the opinion of the rest of the board but my thought was and uh, after our conversations in the past was to not have to have the no parking signs in relation to the corner so people okay. turning that wasn't a problem okay. but we would we would keep the no parking signs off the common until all his plans go through at least with what he's doing to the parking lot on his on his site because that's still going through planning board approval and a bunch of other stuff, so kind of letting that work out. That was my understanding. I don't know if that was other people's understanding, but that was mine. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't understand that. I didn't know that, Mr. Chairman. The reason was, uh, I know we were told that we had the signs put both on east and west side, and then we were authorized to take it out from the on the, on the east side. So now that the board is discussing it, um, is my understanding is that uh, the board don't want to do anything on the east side until he, he's, he's all set with his uh, parking. Yeah, so he's well, okay. set with the planning board. Okay. Yeah, when we're done with all that, let's, all right. re let's revisit it and see where I, we're uh, at. I, I have brought it up a uh, few meetings ago because the north side, east and west, yes. both have no park parking signs to the corners. Yeah. Uh, for the other island where the water fountain was. Uh, but like Chris is talking about, just the other corner, Duvall's corner, Fonzie's mm -hmm. corner there, uh, to have no parking signs. Here the corner there also is what you're talking about? Yes. Oh, 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 okay. So I was misunderstanding. You're saying that no parking from here to corner? No, we have, that, we have that already. That's not the way. We, no, that is on, on the east side? Back. Yes. On the east side. But the west lane? <laughs> no, on the, on the west, the west. The east side of the west lane? Yep. On the yes. <laughs> on the corner. On the corner. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are you talking about the other lane? Other yeah. lane, the, the, the no, east no, lane. No, no, he isn't. No. Okay. Okay. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So our understanding yeah. is straight. Yes. I think John was talking about something different. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I have brought up all four corners. All four corners. Just okay. the corners. He's talking about. Oh, okay. The, the opposite parking. side of the common, actually. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Down the whole side. Yeah. I say let's. Just, I mean, people park on the common for events. Let's let's let this work its way out through the planning board and then go from there. I mean, unless we want to do something differently as a board, but that, that's my understanding and yep. what I think we should do. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Okay. And sewer rates? Should we go there? Sure. Okay. Like the subject. So, favorite <laughs> subject. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to be doing doing it this week and two weeks hopefully. So two weeks. 
Yeah. Actually, Tonight we're just talking about oh our plan, God. and next time would be our hearing. Let's just get it done. This is about the We have to post the hearing. <laughs> David, do you want to oh. explain it? I know we've been sure. working on it together. It drives me nuts. I keep doing this over and over again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Christian, myself, uh, Chris Elkifer, Sharon from the, the Water Department, uh, the Treasurer's Office, uh, let's see, the Collector's Office, and the Assessor's Office all met to find the best way to, uh, and David, <laughs> to find the best way to uh, address this. Uh, what we decided on for a proposal that will, right now we're at the end of FY21, we're going to be $193,000 in the red, the way the sewer enterprise fund is currently operating. So what we're looking at here is a rate increase um, as well as a infrastructure maintenance fee being implemented. And so what these proposed numbers, which I'll give you in a second, will do, will bring us to FY27 before we get in the same financial troubles that we're in now. So it gives us a chance to work some options with some surrounding towns, some other possibilities, kind of buy us another six years, hopefully. Um, so what we're looking at is a 25% increase for the highest commercial users and a 15% increase for residential and the lower tier commercial users. And um, just to be clear, we have not had a rate increase on sewer in 12 years, is that correct? Since 2008. So 2008. Uh, we, did, we did raise water slightly about two years ago, uh, but we have not done anything with sewer, so the, I've gotten a lot of comments that the rates just went up. They haven't gone up in over a decade. <laughs> Um, David, at some point, and I've just yep. at some point, could you quantify? So, when you say twenty-five percent on that, like, what does that translate to in dollars? Uh, let's see. I was trying to find out here. Just yeah, okay. on the average homeowner. Well, it would be fifteen percent on residential, correct, and the low <laughs> commercial rate. Yep. So you'd have to give a couple of we don't have, I guess we don't have that great information right in front of us, do we? Customer <laughs> impacts in <laughs> what are you talking about? You guys made this one, I don't even know where which it tab? is. John, which tab are you on? Um, that's how this older model, 69, 66, you can scroll down. Not that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you. I can see customer impact. Okay, thank you. So, so basically, okay. you'd be looking at uh, for FY21, the $115, is that correct? I think we might have to update this. That that might not have been updated in this. Right Chris, now. what's our what's our current sewer rate for <coughs> residential? Do you know what I'm saying? I know. Oh, okay. I mean, <coughs> we have it. We have a couple of tiers. Yeah. That is have it both with me. Residential sewer seventeen is four dollars and sixty cents. Okay. So. I'm, I'm assuming that's the lowest conservation tier, or whatever it's called. Um, so 15% of that as an increase, whatever that works out to be. $4, what did you say it was? $4.60. So 4 60 times So like a 69 cent increase. Per thousand gallons. Per thousand gallons. Yeah. 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 Or cubic feet, is it? Cubic feet, cubic feet, cubic feet. So it looks like just from the a lot of the analysis, bill average bill is around four hundred dollars. So if it went up by fifteen percent, it would be sixty dollars okay. increase. So there you go. thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, in addition to the increase. What we're finding is it, those increases alone would not make up the deficit that we're working with um, and not put us on the right path, at 
at least for more than a couple of years. So what we want to implement is a $10 infrastructure, infrastructure maintenance fee uh, that would apply to everyone in town who has a water bill. And the reason for this is, uh, as John mentioned before, putting sewer on taxation rather than just putting on taxation already. Uh, everybody in town benefits from the Route 9 business district and those commercial businesses that are that require sewer in order to get <coughs> our tax rate at the 1236 that it currently is. Um, so the 900 or so sewer users that currently pay for the sewer system are the only people that are contributing to the sewer system that supports those businesses. Uh, by adding the infrastructure maintenance fee, everybody in town that has water is kicking in 10 bucks a bill uh, toward maintaining that system and maintaining operations for those systems. So that's our, uh, our, our way of kind of sharing the burden. We're looking at uh, a large infrastructure uh, rebuilding with the Route 9 reconstruction project with new sewer lines, new water lines, things along those, along those lines. And under our current structure, by FY27, if we did nothing, we'd be $2.7 million in the red the way we're operating currently. So, not very good. Tim? How did the $10 get calculated, if I may ask? So, we looked initially at $5 uh, and see how long that would buy us down the road. And basically, it would have bought us two to three years max. Based on so, it's based on amount. years. Okay. Right. And so, the, the ten dollar amount will at least get us to FY twenty seven based on these models. Now these are only models, so if we have some massive sewer break, uh, you know, a pumping station needs to be I don't know rebuilt or something along those lines. This could all change, but based on the best models we have, this would get us to FY twenty seven before we're in as bad a shape as we are now. Can you clarify for people when you say ten dollars a bill and they're getting billed quarterly? Are you saying that's forty dollars a year? Yes. Okay. Yes. Ten dollars a bill. Do you only get one bill? You didn't tell him you wanted a bill every month too. What are you going to bring home on the show? Jeez, yeah, really. Chris had something. You still need the rate or you all set? Uh, yeah, well, I think we can, it's about 60 bucks a year is what the increase would be. That would be for the average, for the average yeah. bill. Uh, residential yeah. bill, I believe. I would have to double check, but just from what I'm seeing in front so of us, and we can clarify that for next week. I so really want to put this in front of the people and put a couple capital articles on the warrant and see if the town wants to fund it as a I just feel like we should, we need to do something, and we could do that, but I feel like we need to do this now, because even if we do this in two weeks, I the, the bills don't go into effect. When would that go into effect, when did, do you know? You don't know. Sue would know. Sue would know. Would it be November? Based on our conversation, if we pass this at our next meeting, after yeah. the public hearing, it would have time for this next water bill based on what the collector said in our meeting. Yeah. And to, okay. to Joyce's point too, just to, to kind of bring people back, mm -hmm. we started this conversation quite a while ago, and God, yes. but but we didn't. When I say quite a while ago, I'm just talking about this this particular correct fiscal year, and there was disagreement about whether or not to move forward with a rate increase at the time. And the reason that we didn't was because people rightfully felt that we needed more information and also more time to explore other possible opportunities, right? And those things have happened. And we've had gotten a lot more input from people. The facts haven't changed from the standpoint that we still clearly ha are putting ourselves on a path to increasing this deficit. So um, yeah, I'm absolutely in favor <coughs> of moving forward. We have to have the hearing yeah. right in two weeks' time anyway. But, you know, and I understand what John's saying, but I think that's part of the potential for, we still need a longer term solution and that this doesn't negate the opportunity to continue to have that discussion. This is just doing something so another 12 years doesn't go by. Because, yeah, the way we're doing things now, uh, last town meeting, special town meeting, we transferred, was it 180,000 
from stabilization. So it's more than that, it's like 240000 Okay, so from stabilization to the sewer enterprise fund, because we would have been negative by 150000 this year if it wasn't for that transfer. And so having to go back to town meeting every year and ask the voters to pay more money or chip in another $100,000 overall, overall tax money can't be dependent on. And yeah. so uh, we could get to a point where we're, we're broke and can't, can't pay our bills at the end of the year the way things are going now if the town meeting said no. Yeah. Okay. So, so for next week? Yeah, or that's next for next week. week. We'll have the hearing next time. And unless we have any more comments, we'll last quick comments. A quick one. <laughs> quick one. So just to be crystal clear for people, <clears throat> sewer people will have a possible $60 increment each bill. Average. Each, well, that's each annual. Average. Each year. I think each, is is that annual or that each bill? Now. Now. Which one are we talking about? That is annual. Yeah. Annual. Yeah. annual. So that's annual. And we bill quarterly down? We bill quarterly. So it's fif roughly $15 a quarter. Okay. And, and I want to clarify that for next meeting, too. So, okay. and so just, the non sewer people, the water users, will get billed $10 per quarter. Correct. $40 here. Well, the water water sewer yes. people they will get so, both. Yes. So yeah. Yeah, we people, that's what I'm right getting up. at. <laughs> <laughs> the gun, so the sewer <laughs> people will also get a <laughs> bill an yes. extra $10. So your water bill will go over $100. Yep. Okay. Hmm? That's what I wanted to just clarify. They will also be billed on their water bills. <laughs> yep. Water and sewer bills will be going over $100. But, for the first time, non sewer customers like myself will be throwing in $10 to help. Well, we thank you very much. You're all failing to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. As long as coming into Hadley, it causes dry mouth. All right, so we'll end there and uh, we'll talk about it next, uh, not next week, but next meeting. Right. Yes, Joyce looks like Okay. <laughs> Uh, we can move on. Town administrator search contract for recruiting services. We have a contract in front of us with uh, MRI. Uh, they are going to uh, put together a bunch of information, interviewing um, some elected officials in town, uh, people in town to kind of shape what kind of ideal candidate we're looking for and then come up with an advertisement to send out to the world uh, for us to recruit a new um, town administrator and uh, then we'll work to screen those candidates and interview them and eventually get it down to a group uh, a panel in town can meet with and decide on our next town administrator. So this would just be to kind of get the whole process started. Uh, I don't think we need to form a committee or anything along those lines at this stage, but um, this would be to get the process rolling. Motion to approve. Second. I got one question. Yep. I'll do. So this says that the rate of $9,800 does not include advertising, which mm -hmm. I understand, but accommodations for on-site interviews or reimbursement of candidate travel expenses. Mm -hmm. I have no desire to reimburse candidates for traveling for an interview or to provide them accommodations for interviewing for a possible job. Yeah. Absolutely. I know Ed didn't oh. get accommodations <laughs> yeah. for coming to an interview. I, I had this question for David yeah. earlier yeah. in the day and I was like, is this a normal thing for town administrators? It doesn't seem like it. And so is that it doesn't candidate sound like or is that the folks from MRI? That's just candidates. Well, candidates. That would be the candidate. Um, I can't tell you that other towns have hired uh, county administrators from places like Ohio or Virginia. Um, that has tended to not pan out well, so I think it would be looking at that. Yeah. So yeah. I, not in the budget. And that doesn't say it's a requirement to do that. It just says it's not uh, Many, many years ago, I uh, applied for a job in the city of Folsom, California. They invited me for an interview, but they made it very clear that it was on my dime to get there. As it should be for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I just want okay. to be clear that we're not paying for that, so yeah. the public yeah. sees that. We're not buying hotel rooms. We're and and on the advertising note, uh, uh, it is in the budget. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's a reasonable expense. Yeah. Uh, okay. That was it. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And if uh, could have 
uh, approve a request for a transfer from the reserve fund to cover the cost of this contract. That would be very handy. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, how about senior center library and fire substation updates? How about building inspector. Search <sighs> session. We are going to make that executive session. We are. You're going to slide. I'm yeah. Gonna slide. I'm sorry. <laughs> you kept asking those questions on sewer. It's really extended the meeting, Joyce. I know. But this isn't under the uh, uh, executive thing. Just some things came up today that I feel like it would be best discussed in executive session. I see. Yeah. Unforeseen. Unforeseen. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, okay. So why don't we just do senior center library and fire substation? Do you? Who wants to go first? How about library? So Joyce and I can get our things in order. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Um, I mean, um, basically, the the library. The, there's really nothing major to report. Um, things are on track. We haven't had any change orders yet. We're very excited about that. Uh, we had a <laughs> fundraising. <laughs> we had a fundraising uh, committee meeting on Monday night. Um, so the fundraising is going well. Um, you know, we've met the commitment so far that we said that we would, but there's, you know, in light of some of the things that we haven't been able to do, um, the really uh, kind of full court the press on to the fundraising from businesses and private individuals, et cetera, uh, looking at grant, uh, grant applications to see if we can get some additional funding in for the solar, for reading room. Great. Joyce, would you like to go on your okay, on the fire substation? No, I'm still trying to find <laughs> something. Um, okay, so we had our finance meeting last night. Uh, I have two change orders for you to approve uh, tonight, and that would be the sep um, potential separate locker room, uh, which is the uh, for the turnout here. This is essentially <coughs> very quickly down the road. It's going to be required by the FPA as well as OSHA. So that bill comes to $24,723.53. Uh, we unanimously voted for it at finance and during our regular meeting. Any questions on that? What was it then? It's a locker room for the turnout here. Oh, OK, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to need to keep it in a protected area. You yeah, so like a locked fence area. Like it's, it's, a, it's a room that we built. Yeah. Building. Yeah. Because that's that's, that's the gear that that's it, like a possibly a cause of cancer Correct. and spread Correct. and different Correct. things. It's Correct. like consolidating it to one room so that yeah. it can be cleaned in there and exactly. doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other one is for dispatch. Um, a dispatch council. So this is for the council that will be going in. Dispatch, um, basically it's going to be just like the one that we have downstairs so that it mimics what we have and where things will go so that if we have to, there won't be any added training when people, if we should have to use that up there, they will just be able to go in and use the equipment that's there. Um, that bill is $13,533.01. And that again was approved by all at both meetings last night. That's all I have for those two proposals. We have a final contingency fund of um, $545,785.97 left over after those spendings. Make a motion to approve uh, PCO 21R2 and PCO 25. Second. Didn't we? I thought we voted on that uh, dispatch. Or did we do we did, it? We did not vote on it because I didn't have the number. Oh, okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Was there a second? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, I thought there was. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And everything is coming along. We're uh, moving into the walls and electric inside and the plumbing and as you can see from the outside, they're almost done finishing with the roofing. They'll be wrapping that up this month. Um, and they've been putting some nice siding and stuff up also right now. So 
it's looking very nice. It really fits in with the character of the area <coughs> there. It's a quite Done. handsome building. Looking good. It's nice. Looking good. Mm -hmm. well, Jane, would you like to update on the senior center? Um, it's a uh, it's crazy in there. I was in there today, and there's yeah. seven different groups of contractors working to make our May first occupancy <coughs> deadline. So we have electricians, plumbers, sheetrockers, carpenters, painters, tile workers, and the stonemason for the fireplace. Um, but it's all coming along, and if you go in tomorrow, all these things that weren't done today are done tomorrow. Right. It's really incredible. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, when they were going to the list earlier today, I was, I was uh, astonished. Drywall's done, Hanish Carpentry's going, painting started, you know, appliances are moving in. Uh, all kinds of things, so it's really making And the progress. only one of those those uh, trades that has one person there is a stonemason. Everybody else has a whole handful for each, so it's need Grand Central Station traffic control. Yeah. Okay, and then I have just two PCOs and one change order that we've approved most everything on, but I guess we have to vote to approve that overall change order, so it's basically we have all the preliminary change orders, and then this is one change order that kind of pays for all of them. So the first one is for PCO 40R1. That's a pressure reducing valve, um, and that's for the domestic water service. And that's at the cost of $1,054.51. And then I have a second PCO that doesn't look like it made it into board docs, and it's not your fault because uh, it came last minute. It's number 41. It's for an AV closet, and that is in the amount of $2,889.86. Was and that not included in the $145,000 change order for the AV equipment? <laughs> this is the closet. Jane, do you know what the closet is? All right, so it's actually, is. Here. it's actually two closets yeah. that were empty chases when the building was being built and I said we want storage in those and they said okay yeah. and then the audio people said rather than our, have our stuff in the IT room we'd be much better with it out here in terms of interference from electronic stuff I assume where it's mostly going to be used so the east side will be electronic I, uh, audio equipment stuff and the other side will be storage for tablecloths and linens and things Yep. That's what it is. What's the what's the remaining contingency plan there? I knew you were gonna ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to take on my computer for approximately now? Approximately three hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Um so may I have a motion for those two change orders? <laughs> motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh and then the final one is the change order which is in the amount of, oh great, um, all these numbers. I believe it's $19,564.94. And this is for final change order for PCO 33. Oh, and this is change order number 006. Uh, and it's for a decorative baller at the bollard at the sidewalk, uh, a catch basin, uh, a call for aid system in the, the bathrooms, a domestic hot water pump, <coughs> additional plaques, uh, and then the PRV is on there as well. So, so uh, we voted on all these. We voted on all these. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, we weren't sure whether we needed to vote on that or not, so we, we did it. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the ambulance and then ambulance, yes. Thank you. Ambulance agreement extension from Action M EMS. I don't know if we, is there any uh, uh, discussion so points or differences <laughs> between our last contract with them? I know we've been happy with the service and yeah, everything so going on. So this is our first contract with them. It's a two-year contract, so it's going to expire June 30th, 2020. Um, the contract allows for a one-year extension. Um, we've already plugged that number <coughs> into the budget, so we know what that is, and we know that we have a balanced budget. David, um, they're just three years of pricing, right? 
Right. So, so we already had the <coughs> pricing locked in. Right. It's the, but the, the contract. Sir, yeah. There's only two years. So when we talked to the uh, the fire chief. He and I are both in agreement that this has been a home run for the town of Hadley. Um, they provide an excellent service uh, and uh, certainly have been out there very active, keeping people healthy, saving lives. <coughs> I would rec I recommend that we uh, extend the contract for one year and use this year to assess the long-term uh, uh, ambulance arrangement. So the um, reimbursements will remain the same if we had our uh, receipts, receipt targets. Yeah. And uh, is the ambulance that looks like committee going to start digging into a new contract or we have to reestablish a uh, committee to work on that? Uh, no, I mean, I, I would assume that they will. Um, I would need to be replaced on it, but hey, and Barb, I think they're pretty comfortable continuing. And I guess the only question I have, I think there's no question on the part of the oversight committee that, that we're extremely yeah. pleased. Um, and when we got into the contract, we did the two year with the one year renewal. I'm just wondering, does action ask for anything longer than a one year extension? Or? I actually think that this one year time period is a time for us to start looking at uh, advancing towards a BLS um, and seeing where that goes. But I'm just, I think we need to look at it. I mean, it's it's a period of time that, you know, it might be worthwhile for us to have our own, but I'm not, you know, that's my own thoughts, and I've been at this for a long time thinking about it. Um, been working on that committee for a number of years also, of getting established and even having uh, our own ambulance service at this point to what we have now. Um, and I think it certainly needs a looking at where we go forward uh, instead of, you know, you're only talking about a one-year contract. That certainly isn't enough time to even think about uh, building our own ambulance service, if that's what we were thinking. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Do we, Never do mind we now. How are you going to fund it? Well, that's no, but to your, to your point, Joyce, I'm wondering, do, <coughs> do we want to, because now we're two years in, we're obviously so pleased. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a big question that's yeah. out there. But it, there's no way it would happen within two years anyway. No. Is there any reason to actually go back to action and ask them if they would be interested in proposing a two-year extension as opposed to one? I think keep the same the same terms and pricing and reimbursement. Obviously, they're making the revenues they need to make. They're doing what they need to do for us. Ask them if they can extend it for two years. Yeah. And just that certainly would term. be a negotiable thing for us to do, and that would give us time to start looking at you know where we're going. Also, I still feel like it still would be a money maker. I. I heard today from uh, somebody that works in Amherst that I saw him and they are not happy with what happened here because they lost revenue. So um, you know, that was their own ball drop in. Good for us. We've you know been, happy, know, and, with, been happy with what we have. Just and exactly what you said. Maybe that's a reason to look and see what Northampton or Amherst has to offer along with a private service, which we went with, to service our because Amherst was servicing this town for a lot of years. But they, and they, had they, excellent service. they can't service themselves. Yes, they, right now Start that's them. not even an option over there. Yeah. And I've talked to many people about that. Anyway, yeah. I think first and foremost, we're not we all, talking to the same people. Then. First and foremost, we all agreed that what matters is our residents and businesses and the quality of care that they're getting. So I would, I would like to propose that we um, request action, um, give us a two year extension proposal. Yeah. David, you had something? So the law might have changed on this, but anything above uh, three years, we've got to get a town meeting vote uh, to approve. So uh, I don't town think meeting. that. We don't have to have a town meeting vote to set this up. If it's above three years. Well, this is not two years. Above three years. I know. Right, so you have a three year, so you have a two year contract. You're going to extend it to four years. I think that final year needs to be approved by town meeting. No, no, uh, no we're extending it. <coughs> Two years from now, you're saying because you're it would be a fourth year, year it would have to go back to town meeting. So you've got a two-year contract. You're going to extend it to three years. You can do that without town meeting vote. To extend it that additional year, I believe, and I could be wrong. I'll do the research. 
um, that you have to get a town meeting vote to approve Why that. wouldn't we agree mutually to end the two-year contract and enter into another two-year contract? Uh, you <laughs> could do that, yes. That would be, we, would, we would have to negotiate. <laughs> we could do that. I'm sure we could negotiate something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Was, was, was that a motion? Second. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, town administrator report. Any. Uh, <laughs> Any, anything we have missed, David, that would, needs to be covered in that uh, report? The only thing, uh, this is available online. People can read it for all the updates. Uh, but the, the, the newest thing that we've done is we've started to look at the emergence of the threat of the new coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, we're working with our re state and regional local public health officials to develop plans for responding to any threat and just to give everybody the assurance that presence is no known cases of COVID-19 in the valley. The only one case known in Massachusetts is in Norfolk County about over in Boston. I haven't heard that. Is that new? No, it was uh, on the other day there was somebody quarantined in Pittsfield. Okay. So somebody in Pittsfield. Um, School Superintendent, Town Administrator, Board of Health, Emergency Management Department. We are working with the other town departments to develop continuity of operation plans to minimize risk of transmission and to ensure that public services <coughs> continue to be provided if cases may appear locally. Wash your hands and cover your mouth when you cough. That's about the bottom line for any flu. Mm -hmm. So just everybody do that. You'll be safe. It's national. It's uh, just one of those things that you commonly do and you'll be well and healthy thank you um everything else is progressing well recast end of year report schedule a uh, the audit is moving forward counting uh revenues are coming in uh, better than expected expenses are kept kept uh, lower than expected at this point April 5th, Helping Hearts for Hadley Schools 5K Race. April 6th, Hadley Mothers Club Candidates Forum. April 14th, Annual Town Elections. And May 7th, Annual Town Meeting. Great. Thank you. Any announcements other than what we have? I do have a couple. Additional announcements? But it, I think we all have. We have one seat becoming available this coming year. Uh, Molly is uh, dissenting from us after a number of years of enough with all of us. <laughs> We've been very active. So we have four of the candidates here here tonight. Yeah. And um, if you all like to stand up and just introduce yourselves to TV. Let me see who you are. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I'll go first. I'm Nicole Burkum. I grew up in Hadley. Um, I graduated from Hopkins in 06. After that, I moved to Florida for a little bit for school and law school. Um, I met my husband in law school, and we moved back to Hadley five years ago. I have a four-year-old in preschool and a nine-month-old at home. Um, Andrew and I recently opened an office in Hadley, so we have a local business here. We're both attorneys there. Um, and I'm looking forward to hopefully serving on the board. Thank you. Next. Thanks, Amy. Hi, I'm Amy Parsons. Um, I'm from Hadley. I'm a 13th generation farmer. Um, I work for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. I graduated from Hopkins Academy also in 2006. I went to Kansas State University. I got a Bachelor's of Science in Agricultural Business. Um, I now work, like I said, for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. I also work on the family farm. Um, I am back in Hadley. I worked for seven years in the private sector uh, for a multi-billion dollar company, um, ConAgra. And I did production scheduling, transportation logistics, OSHA safety compliance, um, production management, and I also did HR functions as well. Um, so I am capable of looking at something from a big picture standpoint. Um, I also look forward to uh, running for the board and uh, hopefully joining you guys next year. Thank you. Jane. Hi, I'm Jane Nevin-Smith. I've lived in Hadley more than half of my life. 
two of my children, two of my five children graduated from Hopkins. Um, I've been involved in a lot of different jobs in my life, from construction to ownership of companies to organizing people, and I think all of these attributes give me skills that will be an asset if I come to the board. And I encourage everybody, regardless of which of us you vote for, to vote. That's critical. Thank you. Thank you. Brenda? Woman. <laughs> I'm Brenda Feidenkavitz. Um, I've, I've been here since 1988. I started my own business uh, almost 24 years ago. It'll be 24 years in September, and I don't like public speaking. <laughs> you know, that's, that's one, my one downfall, but I, I know I have many, many um, pluses to bring to the board. I have a, an extensive uh, business background. Um, I have 15 employees. I'm not a multi-billion company like Amy worked for, <laughs> but I am me, and I do, you know, we, we have a fam. I mean, it's a, a small family business, and our people are our our business family. I mean, we do we primarily do um, just commercial um, shopping centers and hospitals and things like that. And you know, we're pretty busy. And you know, my husband and my daughter gave me the their blessing to uh, you know throw my ring in the hat and my hat in the ring. <laughs> I should say, see, I told you, I'm nervous, but that's okay. Um, and I, it, this town is just a wonderful town, and I think that you know it's we have to keep moving on and and just be you know responsible for our taxpayer dollars and do the best job that we can we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Good luck to all of you. Yeah. Yeah. Next month. Thank you. <laughs> good luck to everybody. Thank um, you. We have a few little bitch stories to read tonight. Mm -hmm. um, to the family of Susan Rondo, uh, wife of Bruce, uh, our condolences to their family. Uh, Christopher Kyes, <coughs> condolences to his family. Dr. Kathleen Hollick, uh, who practiced for many years in Northampton, uh, raised her two children here in Hadley. Uh, our condolences to her. She was, she was a, she loved her patients and I loved her. Um, we also, to the condolences, uh, Teresa Boucher, her daughter is Norma Kostick that lives here in town. So our condolences to all of their families from this love board. Thank you. Anyone else with any announcements? Good. Okay. All right. So we are going to move into executive session. We will not uh, uh, return in open session. And <coughs> may I have a uh, motion to get into the executive session. Speaking of ambulance, I do. You've got, you got that. Speaking of ambulance, I do. Speaking of ambulance, I do. We never want to see an ambulance coming. Just the two topics, the all three topics, I guess. Yeah. Okay, yes. I have a second. As chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley will not uh, convene in open session. Roll call vote, please. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you too. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>